So, were you trying to get kicked out of class today? <laughs> I'm used to being a very controversial figure. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm David. Oh, I know that too. Kind of hard not to, given how often you speak up in class. <laughs> I'm Alice. Ah, the mysterious woman who never speaks at all. Yeah, well, I'm getting my PhD in physics, so... Kind of have to portray the shy oddball type. Join me? Can't stay long. But when I saw you sitting over here, I just couldn't resist giving you a hard time about what you said earlier today in class. Well, I am always up for a challenge. Please do tell. You told our professor that there was no way that he could be a happy person because he clearly has no social principles. Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, look, that, that, that comment was just a, a piece of a larger point I was trying to make before class so rudely ended on me. It was also pretty judgmental of our professor. Not at all. Anyone who defends stealing in certain circumstances has no principles. But I will only continue the thought if you admit that you found my discussion riveting. You piqued my interest. If you let me buy you coffee, I promise to keep doing that. Okay. But I don't drink coffee. I'll take tea. Of course you will. Okay, so Alice, <clears throat> what is your fundamental mission in life? My fundamental mission in life, I would say, to be a groundbreaking physicist. Very ambitious. I like that. And would that make you feel happy? Of course. Okay, and can we agree that underlying all human action is the drive to be happy? It's our fundamental mission in life. Yeah, I can relate to the role of human happiness, but where do principles fit in? Let's talk about what makes people happy. Do something for me. I, I want you to imagine that you're walking down an unfamiliar street. It's getting dark. Oh, do I have to close my eyes? Sure. You're all alone. Another person starts walking toward you from a distance. It's just the two of you on the street. Now, what's the first concern that enters your mind? Will he hurt me? Or will he rob me? So your first concern is that he might initiate physical force against you? Of course. And your second concern is that he might steal from you? Right. It's universal. First concern, physical safety. Second concern, theft of your property. Sounds reasonable. Now, why is your property so important to you? Because I work hard for it. But beyond that, what does your property do for you? Your home. Provides shelter. How about your food? One of my biggest passions in life. Plus, keeps me from starving to death. Your clothes? My clothes keep me warm, and sometimes they make me look good, which makes me happy. I'd say from what I've seen, your clothes always make you look good. But as you were saying... Right. So can you think of any time where you'd be better off if someone hurt you physically? Does my chiropractor count? No, you, you volunteered for that. OK, well, then the answer is no. Have you ever been better off if another person stole from you? Never. OK, th this is the process of discovering the principles of human interaction. But let's take it a step further. How about relationships? Oh, this is going to get interesting, David. Maybe I should switch from tea to wine. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's start with your friends, your family, and the people that you work closely with. How do you treat them? I treat them with kindness, love, and respect. And would you ever initiate physical force against them or their property? Of course not. But what if you did? What would happen to those relationships? It would be catastrophic. No more trust, no more relationships. You know, I always knew philosophy was easier than physics. When are you going to ask me something hard? 
I'm getting there. Okay, so, so far we've established that you would always be worse off if another person hurt you or stole your property. Of course. Can we also say that you would never hurt or steal from your family, friends, or coworkers? Yep. And would it also be fair to say that you wouldn't tolerate others who initiated physical force against their family, friends, or associates, or even advocate such behavior? Yes. So why are your relationships important to you? Well, it depends on the relationship. I mean, I can buy food and pay the rent when I'm employed. My personal relationships provide me with love and support. And without them, you'd be less happy? Of course. How about your neighbors? Would you ever initiate physical force against them or their property? No. All right, I, I want you to imagine that uh, you, you're a young mother. OK. Now, what if your little girl saw her friend's new bike? She wanted one for herself, but you can't afford it. Would you then steal the brand new bike from your neighbor? Of course not. If you wouldn't steal it, would you instead ask another neighbor to steal the bike for you? You wouldn't use a go-between, an agent to do your dirty work for you. Right. So, Alice, the same principles that hold true in your personal life hold true in every aspect of your life. Well, David, if my principles wavered from person to person, then by definition, they aren't principles. Like your style, Miss Physicist. That never changes. Yes, but... Human beings are more complicated than gravity. But social principles are as predictable as gravity. That was my point in class today. And as you agreed earlier, you would always be worse off if someone initiated physical force against you or stole from you. It's nature's laws. We can't escape the negative results we'll get from breaching these principles. OK, well, then you'd have to apply these social principles to politics. OK. Think about it. Politics is a system where people affect other people. What do they say to encourage you to vote for them? They'll give people things they want and force us to act like they think we should. OK, so they'll promise us a bunch of stuff, right? Free parks, health care, free retirement, so on. Exactly. What about values? Let's say you think it's immoral to smoke marijuana, and a politician promises to crack down on everyone who uses it. There's only one way they can do that. They'll initiate physical force. Exactly. I hear you. OK, now it's your turn to imagine something. <sighs> a candidate is running for mayor, promising to bring a brand new taxpayer-funded football stadium to town. Now, you think this is a great idea, as does the wealthy owner of the football team. But some of your neighbors don't even like football, and they think it's a terrible idea. So this candidate, is he going to write a personal check? I mean, is he going to finance it out of his own pocket? No. So he'll pass around a hat, right? Ask anybody who wants the stadium to make a voluntary contribution. Uh, unfortunately, no. Then essentially, he's gonna have to take money from your neighbors in order to keep his promise. And we agreed earlier that the initiation of physical force against people or their property is always wrong, decreases happiness. Right. Please tell me, what is the difference between asking someone to initiate force on your behalf and voting for a politician to do the same? There is no difference. Voting for a politician who, who promises to steal for you is just like hiring a personal agent to plunder. So you're saying the underlying principle of the political system is force? I'm saying that the fundamental principle of social relationships directly relates the initiation of force to the flourishing of human harmony, happiness, and prosperity. Breach this, less harmony, happiness, and prosperity is predictable as gravity. 
And that extends to all our relationships, personal, social, and political. It makes sense. I just I want to make sure I'm getting your point. Sure. So if I vote for someone who promises to get me things that I want, it's a direct breach of my own most important personal principles. Yes. I never thought about it that way. You delivered. So did you. Thanks. You know, someone asked me once what's really wrong with stealing. You uh, want to tackle that one with me over dinner on Friday? What time?